I think uh, in uh, bringing the subcommittee to order, uh, I, I want to say, unfortunately, Senator Okaka, Danny Okaka, Hawaii, uh, broke two ribs in a minor accident at home last week. He's unable to be with us to attend the hearing to, uh, today. And uh, his statement and the uh, witnesses' uh, answers to his questions for the record will be included in the uh, hearing, uh, the actual uh, hearing record for today. And I understand he's recovering quickly, and we look forward to seeing him back again soon. He's one of my favorite people. We love Danny Okaka around here. One of the off the DL and back into the game and the starting lineup, and I'm told he will be very soon. Uh, but today's hearing will examine the uh, recently enacted Government Performance and Results Modernization Act of 2011 and how progress is being made toward its full implementation. It's bipartisan legislation which I sponsored uh, with, among others, Senator Akaka. And I want to say Senator Voinovich, uh, I think Senator Warner. Um, maybe Senator, no, it was it Senator Brown? Was Senator Brown a co-sponsor? I'm not sure. Could have been. Could have been. Well, <laughs> anyway, a bunch of us uh, pushed this legislation. The last Congress, it got signed into law. But um, we're, uh, I'm grateful to all my colleagues for their support and uh, looking forward to hearing how we're doing in its uh, implementation. But 17 years ago, Congress passed the Government Performance and Results Act to help us better manage our finite resources and to improve the effectiveness of federal programs. Given our mind-boggling budget deficits today, uh, there's never been a greater need for more informed and effective management of taxpayer dollars. Since 1993, agencies across the federal government have developed and implemented strategic plans and have routinely generated a tremendous amount of performance data. The question is, have federal agencies actually used their performance data to get better results? Producing information, as we know, does not by itself improve performance, and experts from both sides of the aisle agree that the solutions developed in 1993 did not work as we had originally anticipated and hoped. The American people deserve, and our fiscal challenges demand, better results. In fact, when the, the, the bill was passed in 93, I was just becoming a new governor, but when the bill was passed in 93, I think it was sort of referred to as the Results Act. But they wanted the, the folks in that administration, we had a new uh, president, and we had at the time, I think, a Democratic Congress, but they were focused on per, uh, performance and on results, something that I think the three of us certainly focus on results, wanting to get things done. Vince uh, Lombardi used to say, if you're not keeping score, you're just practicing. He said a lot of memorable things. That was one of my favorite. I think he also said, winning isn't the only thing. No, winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. So we could probably spend uh, the better part of this hearing coming up with, uh, with his quotes, but I like this one a lot. If you're uh, not uh, keeping score, we're just practicing. But uh, we haven't been doing a very good job of setting clear goals for federal programs, at least for some of them. We've not been doing a very good job of keeping score either, and it's time to get into the game and play for real. The Government Performance and Results Modernization Act brings a strategic government-wide focus to performance management by requiring the Office of Management and Budget to set government-wide goals to align programs from different agencies to work together to reduce overlap and duplication. It also requires OMB to seek majority and minority views from Congress on those goals. With an eye toward eliminating redundancy within government, the law requires agencies to support government-wide priorities by linking their goals to them and working across party lines to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of their work. Pleased to hear that OMB is taking the new law seriously. And early, in fact, OMB helped direct, helped develop the new law. So it's especially encouraging that they're also taking it seriously. But in early April, uh, OMB Director Jack Liu, along with Deputy Director for Management Jeff Zions, uh, who's with us today, issued a memo to agency and department heads directing them to begin to implement the new law. The memo told agencies to submit the name of a, their agency chief operating officer to OMB by May 2nd, and that was last Monday, I think, last Monday, and the name of their agency performance uh, information officer by June 1st. Now, these positions codified by the new law are crucial to improving the performance of the federal government. The memo also instructed agencies to begin holding data-driven uh, progress reviews of their goals by the end of June. I look forward to hearing from Mr. Zions today about whether these timelines will be met and about how many agencies have put their chief operating officer into place. 
Finally, the law requires that all the results and performance information agencies generate uh, be placed on a single searchable website. And this electronic information would replace much of the uh, large performance-related documents agencies produce today that often go unread. It will provide the sort of transparency and accountability of agency performance that Congress and the American people demand. It will also enable us to see what's working, to fix what's not, and to make some tough decisions about what programs may be duplicative or not needed. This website, known as performance.gov, has yet to be launched, and recent cuts to the electronic government fund make its future a bit cloudy. That's a matter of concern to me. I know it is to others. And we hope to hear uh, more today about the website status and the importance from our witnesses. Finally, during his uh, State of the Union address a couple of months ago, President Obama pledged to merge and reorganize agencies. I believe Mr. Zients is leading these efforts for the President, and uh, we hope to hear from him and other witnesses about how this new law can serve as a tool for making some of the tough decisions ahead, and we know they'll be tough. Today, as we face unparalleled challenges both here and abroad, and these require knowledgeable and nimble federal government that can respond effectively. With concerns growing over the mounting federal deficit and national debt, the American people deserve to know that every dollar that they send to Washington is being used with its utmost potential. We need to replace uh, the uh, what I would describe as the culture of spendthrift that has become all too common in uh, Washington and really in federal agencies across the country. We replace that culture of spendthrift with what I describe as a culture of thrift. And making better use of performance information is an invaluable tool that can help us get there. If used effectively, it can identify problems, find solutions, and uh, develop approaches that can help us to provide better service to the people who send us here for less money than we're spending today. Better results for less money. And with that said, I'm not going to turn to our witnesses for their testimony, but with that said, I'm going to turn to Senator Scott Brown for whatever's on his mind. <laughs> Thank you. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs>